Good evening. I, I think I'll save some time by not going into a long introduction of my guest. If you don't know him on site, then you obviously just arrived from some other planet. Um, <laughs> he was here last night in stocking feet, and it, it'll take too long to explain that. But uh, to say that he's a splendid actor is to understate the case, and if you don't believe it, uh, you can check that out these days in Camelot, if you're lucky enough to be in one of the cities that it tours in. W would you welcome again what I wish were a month-long conversation with Richard Burton? Um, Last night you were talking about your father, and uh, it was wonderful. And, and in, in passing, you mentioned that your mother died when you were, when you were two. Um, when your mo mother dies at that age, do you have any visual memory of her, or any, any kind of no. memory at all of? Uh, no, none at all. Yeah. And apparently, I was a, a, a real mother's boy. I went with her everywhere. I hung on to her. Mm. Uh, but uh, there must have been. I, I think the shock must have been so great that when they told me she'd gone away and she wouldn't come back, which I don't remember being told, mm -hmm. I never asked for her again. I completely, obviously, cut her out of my two-year-old mind. Yeah. And I have no recollection of her whatsoever. <clears throat> I often wonder if under deep hypnosis, which can regress people practically to the womb, uh, that memories of that age would come out. Supposedly they do. I don't, I don't know whether it's they must dangerous or not. I mean, Yes, it must be sleeping there somewhere in some mm -hmm. dormant part of the brain, but uh, I'm not sure that I'd like to yeah. to remember. W were you sort of passed about uh, then amongst uh, sisters and the other parts of your large uh, family? No. Uh, uh, my mother died giving birth to the, her 13th child, and uh, who is very much alive, uh, my brother Graham. and. Uh, he was five days old when she died, and she died actually of, uh, of neglect. Uh, she was a very strong woman, yeah. uh, because she was, she was 44 when she died, and she married my father when she was 16, and she had 13 children. And um, uh, two died in infancy, and the others grew up. Uh, Medical neglect? Uh, yes, she died of puerperal fever, which we used to call bed fever, which is simple neglect, ne neglect by a doctor, hygienic neglect. Yeah. And so uh, my eldest brother was married, and so my little brother, my five-day-old brother, went to live with the eldest brother, mm -hmm. and I went to live with my eldest sister. But I commuted as to her. She lived in another village called Taibach, uh -huh. and she was married to a minor. And um, I would spend the school week as to her. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, mm -hmm. with my sister in the village of Taibach. Mm -hmm. And uh, the weekends, uh, or most weekends, uh, back in pont de -Ven with my family, with my brothers and sisters. So in that sense, you've shuttled the... Uh, Shuttled back and forth, yes. <coughs> Was her name Sissy, the, the sister? We called her Sis, yes. Uh, her name I, was I Cecilia, yes, actually. Yeah. But uh, she's still very much alive. And her husband, who was like my... Uh, adopted father, in a sense. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he died last year from the same disease as my uh, brother, uh, pneumoconiosis. And he also was 79. Mm -hmm. And um, I had a very happy childhood. As a matter of fact, I often think when I talk to other people and hear about their trials and tribulations with their parents and so on, that perhaps it's better to grow up without any, to be brought up uh, avuncularly, <laughs> or whatever the word is, to have aunts and uncles who spoil you and all compete to, uh, to, to get your, uh, your affection and your love. So I would wander around from family to family and this one would slip, slip me sixpence and another one threepence and so on, and I'd grade them accordingly. <laughs> and, um, so I had a really very happy childhood. Were you above telling one that the other one had given you more? And, uh, I would but, hint at it, yes. Yeah. I was, uh, <laughs> as one would do to one producer. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the er, later Burton was pre-shadowed in the... Yes, he had his... Young... <laughs> uh, as a matter of fact, I'd always had this happy uh, knack of, of acquiring money, even during the 
bad days of the Depression, I, um, I would sometimes earn uh, as much as the minimum wage of a miner while I was at school. Uh, it meant f a very full day, of course. Uh, I would get up at about, I would get up when the miners went to work, uh, or rather when they got up before they went to work, which would be half past four or five in the morning. I still do get up at that time. And um, I would go up to the mountains with a, I remember I had a green sweater, especially for the occasion. And I'd go up to the mountains with a sack and a shovel and fill up the sack with uh, uh, horse manure and uh, cow manure and uh, take it back home. Then I would have to take a bath, of course, cold bath. We didn't have any heat because I was stinking. And, uh, <laughs> and put this dreaded green sweater away. And um, then I would go and wait for the express from London and wait for the daily newspapers to arrive. And then I delivered the newspapers. And um, then I would have breakfast. Then I would walk to school, the, the grammar school. And uh, then I had an arrangement with the fish and chip shop and with my customers who had the, the newspapers, I would sell the dung for sixpence a, a bucket to the various uh, allotments. You know, people had allotments where they had their own gardens. And I got sixpence a bucket for the dung and I was paid one shilling a week for delivering the newspapers, which in those days, uh, I don't know what that would be in American money, I suppose about 25 cents. Um, and then I would recollect some, not all, but a great many of the newspapers which I delivered mm -hmm. during the week. I would recollect them on the Saturday and deliver them to a fish and chip shop and uh, on Saturday morning. They wrap them in that, don't they, to sell they, them? They used to, yes. Yeah. Not, not now. <coughs> and they don't taste as good, you know, that without the printer's ink on them. <laughs> I'm sure that, I swear. Yeah. I can tell the difference. Yeah. Anyway, um, then I would... Um, there was, a, there was a thing that you turned with a handle which cleaned the potatoes in this fish and chip shop. And, uh, but it couldn't get the eyes out. So I would eye the potatoes. And on a good week with tips from my customers and so on, I could earn as much as 30 or 35 shillings, which was the miners' minimum wage at that time. Okay. And so I always had a, a, a happy... Um, genius for uh, getting money. You realize what you've just done. You've given some critic a wonderful excuse. Dart at the, yes, and now he can say uh, Burton revealed that he sold dung as a child and now he's at it again. Uh, <laughs> yes, indeed, I think, I think they've, uh, one or two of them have said that without, without, <laughs> without, knowing. without previous knowledge, yes. 